Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. <clears throat> it is the 21st of September, the day after the Cotswold 113, and we made it, we did it, and got the medal. It was a bloody hard day. Um, you know, definitely one of the hardest days I've ever had. Oh, my eye looks a bit lazy, doesn't it? Um, but, yeah, we made it. Um, let's talk through the day. So I got to um, Lake 32, at I think it's around 5.15 in the morning. Uh, my waves, I was in the first wave, it's 7 a.m. start. Um, probably started about five past, 10 past seven maybe. It was very quick. Uh, but yeah, transition was good. Uh, you know, got everything set up how I wanted it to. I uh, didn't forget anything. Um, so yeah, I was happy and I had a little bit of time to um, just get a bit woken up really and get ready to start the race after I was set up. So got got ready for the swim, got my wetsuit on and that, got on with the swim. The swim was really good. Lake was cold when you first get in, but then it was perfect. Um, and it was a really nice swim throughout. Really, really nice swim. And I ended up doing the swim in like 43 minutes, uh, which was good. I was hoping for anywhere between 40 and 45 minutes. So yeah, happy. Um, given that, you know, obviously haven't done that much swimming this year. And that's my longest open water swim. Uh, I was happy. Um, so yeah, that, that was all that needed to be said about the swim, really. It set me up nicely. Got out on the bike. First, I would say 15 miles were absolutely fine. And then my chain and and my gears started feeling clunky. So I stopped to have a look at it. And I'm no mechanic. Um, I'd hoped that I'd sorted it. I just played around with the chain a bit and tried to just check where it was. It was getting stuck. And I couldn't really sort it. Um, and then around mile 35, I got a puncture. My first ever puncture on the roadside um, to go with the first time I've ever had any issues with the chain or, or any of those sorts of issues. So a little bit unlucky, really. Um, and then the kit that I had bought for a puncture repair, like the puncture repair kit with the levers to get the, the rim out, um, they were, they couldn't quite get the rim out. Um, it was an absolute nightmare and I and including I don't know how long I would stop for doing the puncture but um, including the chain issues and then having more chain issues later on after getting going again uh, with the puncture I think in total I spent about 35 minutes on the roadside uh, and I worked that out because my bike split was 442 and uh, my timer on my uh, bike computer said 404 which which pauses whenever you stop um 404 though i would be chuffed with um if that was my bike split you know if i hadn't had the problems i'd be absolutely chuffed with that um i was hoping for around four hours and that that would be great um let alone the fact that i rode a lot of the race with the bike not really working very well um and it was a fairly windy day um you know lots of people said about the wind um I would be happy with that, absolutely happy with 404. So, you know, forget about the 442. It's happened, I've learned a lot from what happened. I need to know more about bikes and um, being able to do more things with my bike and know what the issue is with the chain and sort it and obviously being able to repair uh, the puncture quicker or change the, change the tube. Um, so yeah, but we got it done and then um, out onto the run and started off really well i was hoping to do each there was three laps so each lap was like 4.3 miles or something 4.4 miles and i was hoping to do each lap around uh, an hour just slightly under an hour which would um get me a sub three half marathon i did the first lap in uh one uh, sorry no did the first lap in 57 minutes <clears throat> did the second lap in 103 and the third lap in like 109 or 111 or something i think in total my bike uh, my half marathon was 316 not too disappointed to be honest i don't think that's bad at all given everything that happened and the fact that i ran a lap and a half of the run with absolutely nobody else out there uh, apart from the marshals absolutely incredible marshals i've never known a race where the athletes were put first as much as they were yesterday you know and the uh, the marshals were asking how many laps you had left when you were going round. And whenever I said, you know, I've got one more lap, they were like, you know, no worries, we'll be here. Um, and they were. Not one marshal left their, left their post. And, um, yeah, it was really amazing. And on my very last lap, because literally uh, there was one, one or two people who were 
uh, on their last lap as I was on my last lap, but they were about 20 minutes in front of me maybe. Um, because of that, um, two or three of the marshals followed me around and stayed with me for the whole, whole lap and chatted to me a bit, kept me going. And obviously the last lap did slow a little bit down to like 3.11, but I did run nearly all of the um, half marathon. I walked through the aid stations and walked for maybe a total of about five minutes, um, I would say. And that's sort of being generous because I really didn't walk a lot and that was my goal. So I'm super chuffed with it, super chuffed. Obviously, to finish in 8.44, I didn't really want that. You know, I was hoping that I'd be able to do uh, around eight hours, um, but I couldn't care less. You know, my medal doesn't say on it how fast I went. It says that I've done a half, half Ironman. So, you know, big lessons learned and I'm already looking at next year. It looks unlikely that I'm going to be able to get an entry to an Ironman next year. God knows what's going to happen with Ironman events, whether they even happen next year. And if they do, there's obviously going to be a massive backlog of people who have tried to enter this year or wanted to enter next year and were already on the waiting list and things like that. So it does look unlikely. So I think my first plans, as I'm sat here right now, what I'm thinking of next year is to enter both the Cotswold 113 and the Cotswold Classic, which are the same event but held in June and August, uh, if they go ahead in their usual dates. Um, so I think that will be the plan and let's just try and focus on getting a lot faster really 8.44 but take the 37 minutes or so off of that 8, 8.07 uh, you know we can get that down to like sub 6.30 I'm sure of that you know I've got you know by next June I could be three or four stone lighter and that goes a massive way I could even have a lighter bike but or a lighter or more um, a, a proper road bike um, with proper like um, race wheels on it and things like that you know there's lots of things I can do and literally the sky is the limit um, but I just had to get over the line yesterday it was so tough um, obviously it did go through my mind whether to pull out when I was having the issues with my bike but I just couldn't I knew that too, too many people were, um, were waiting on me and waiting to see how I was doing I just couldn't pull out so I had to get it done um, all of the marshals and everybody was so supportive and uh, amazing athletes giving me cheers on the way around and stuff. And yeah, we got there. I got blisters on my feet, which started instantly. Another thing that I've had no issues with in training, blisters on my feet. I haven't had blisters on my feet in bloody ages. God knows why that happened yesterday. And it happened straight away. Within the first lap, I was feeling my feet already. And I, I you know, that's like three miles in. I've ran three miles hundreds of times and not have blisters in these trainers so as to why that happened yesterday I changed my socks in T2 as well because obviously I know a lot of people say maybe that's why you got blisters I, I changed my socks you know so that they would be clean and dry and they still blistered so no idea why <laughs> no idea why but we got it done we got it done we, you know I showed a lot of determination and um and uh you know a lot of um a lot of grit to get through it and the finish line, um, obviously I was the last finisher and the 113 team, the 113 events team who held the event uh, allowed my family to come into the finish line because there was no one else there and uh, see me over the line. And they even let my niece and nephew run down the red carpet with me, which was an amazing moment and also gave them both a medal. Obviously they had a few spare medals from athletes who didn't turn up and that made their day. And you know, they've gone into school this morning and probably told their teachers and stuff about how they, they've got a half Ironman medal. So yeah, amazing. Um, and you know, my nephew said to me just as we were walking away that he's gonna do one of these one day. And you know, that's just, you know, that's great whether or not he does. Obviously, that, you know, he's very young, he's six years old, but you know, it, it's just, uh, it could, only positive things can come from that experience for them. Um, so yeah, overall an amazing day. Um, I don't feel too bad today. Obviously it's like 10 a.m. I'm up and about, so I don't feel too bad. Um, yeah, I think you just gotta try and get on with it and try and be active really. You know, if you sit around, you're gonna feel a little bit rubbish, but um, I got up and got on with it really. So yeah, in general, can't, can't knock the day. I did everything I could. I controlled what I could control. And um, on to the next one. You know, there's no finish line in my life now. I know that from my experiences in the past, whenever I sort of put weight on, whenever I got to my biggest, it was because I crossed the finish line and let that let that stop me, let me let that stop everything I'd worked on. So 
you know, the minute I can, I'll be back working out and carrying on to lose weight and, and then um, looking at next year, really. Um, yeah, it's as simple as that, really. Let's keep moving forward. Um, massive lessons, massive gains made from, from yesterday. Let's keep moving forward. But I can't thank everybody enough for everything that they've said to me over the past 24 hours or even the past week, wishing me well and then congratulating me. It's been amazing. Um, you know, yeah, definitely a day I ain't going to remember, uh, a day I ain't going to forget for a long time. And yeah, that's me done. I shall see you guys in the next video.